I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo of the Torah YouTube channel. We are so glad you are here to join us. We know that your time is very valuable, and we are going to make the very most of this time because you cannot qualify this kind of time because it is time with Yah. It is seeking and understanding his laws, statutes, and commands. And hey, the band is back. We're back. I know. We're back. Hey, it's like the, the Beatles re, uh, reunion, except they're all dead. They all dropped them out of the sky, I think. Oh. Yeah, long before oh. your time. I think so. I don't I know, didn't though. Even know that was a little bit before my time. I yeah. Think so. I think no, they didn't? I think they right, Hey, we got Nicole, too. Hey, everybody's here, everyone. Where you guys been? Uh, we've been working. We had to deal with uh, runaway cows. So you've been chasing cows through the jungle? Pretty much. How many miles of cow running did you do? Uh, not I at least did uh, 10 miles by myself. I would say you guys probably did like 10 miles of running through the deep, grassy jungle that is very... Wet. Very wet, very it rugged, very hardcore. And um, at the end, we got all our cows back. But yesterday, what happened? One of the calves died. Yeah, one of our calves died. And so the day that we did it, and this is something crazy because we keep the... You know, every time that we do Torah stuff, every time that we uh, seek Yah and we seek to teach everybody the laws of Yah, everything in our life goes haywire. And it's not, I don't think it's simply because we have 10 pit bulls, which is out of the norm for sure. And it's very hard to maintain them and keep them and um, as well as maintain ourselves. But every time that we do Torah, there's just a supernatural crazy events that go down. And the baby calf that we had was doing perfectly fine. Everything was good. And it's so wet around here that the calf fell down he fell down a couple times, and I think he had internal damages, and he ended up dying. So the reason that Eli and I were doing our Yahoo and the Torah early without these guys is because as we all of our cows ran away with the rest of them, we only have like five left, six, and um, they all ran one day, right? The beginning of the day, we've discovered they are all completely gone, every single one of them, which is it's just not possible that, that they all took off. And they, they I guess it was possible because they all took off and they jumped a wall that we have and they took off and they, they caught another herd that I guess was up the road that was running away and they all ran away together. And so we lost everything and we also lost our two calves that we had left. They, they disappeared. We had no idea where they were at. Um, and it was the day, it's literally the day Hasatan is, is having his way with us. And we know that we will be sifted like flour. And like I said yesterday, I said, when the calf died, I said, don't cry for this. All we need to do is just do more Torah. If we want to attack the demons that are attacking us, then we need to fight back using the word of Yah, which will, is, is greater than anything, right? They can take us, they can take our lives, they can take our cows, they can take our dogs, they can take whatever, but they will not take our souls. And so here we are, everybody. And um, before we start, I, I'd like to say, I'm going to tell you guys two things that I am completely feel blessed about. And I would like you guys to come up with a couple things as I am talking about this. Here's what I think is one of the most amazing, and I'm thankful for it, is Thomas, the son, right? And in the book of Enoch, it calls him Thomas. But I am thankful that Yah created the son. And I'll tell you why. The, the reason that I am very thankful that he created the son is because every single day we have light. We have heat, we have power because of the sun, uh, we have our crops that are able to grow because of the sun. Everything that we have, if we didn't have the sun, right, we would be completely dead. So I'm very thankful and very grateful that Yah has created such an incredible design and incredible stuff. So I like the sun. The second thing I feel very, very blessed about that is, is also what is almost a curse for us is our dogs, the pit bulls. And we are, I guess, what we'd be called uh, pit bull connoisseurs, or we are professional pit bull raisers. And uh, again, that is not by choice. It's simply because Caden left the door open one time. We had three pit bulls total, and that's probably the extent of everything we get. Caden left the door open, and we ended up with an extra seven. Whoops. And yeah, whoops. And so here we are. And the the Nicole is a mother of twins, and. Um, we all knew, right, when we first got the dogs, yeah, we got to get rid of the dogs. This is, this is insane. And as babies, the, the dogs, they were pretty good. They, they, they started getting crazy. And for those who don't know how dogs are, when um, mother dogs are changing from uh, milk that they feed them to solid food, they will eat the food. The mother dog will eat the food and then uh, 
blow, oh, okay. throw it up, the blow chunks, right? They, they just puke it up, and it looks like dog food. It looks like regular dog food. And all the pups, they go for it. And they, that is where the fighting, we, we noticed the fighting was a little bit more than, than normal is because every time she, she threw up, and was feeding her dogs, there was a fight. And so <laughs> it went from like not having to keep our eyes completely on the puppies and the babies to whenever she was doing that, all of a sudden there were like itty bitty tiny dogs. But at the same time, they were in the palm of our hands and, you know, you could like pick them up and, and you know, the, the little tiny teeth and, you know, it's just kind of like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, man, this, this is crazy. But they got bigger and they started doing other stuff. And we have a saying about don't trigger the pack. And we have to be smarter than other individuals, other people. And we have to do things very, very smart because if we just go running out the door, out, out like something happens outside and we decide we're going to run out the door, well, you'll have 10 pit bulls running right behind you. And it's, it's, um, it's easy to get them triggered. But the blessing that I see is that the creation of Yah and every single day I look at these pit bulls and I see how they work and how they operate, how they deal with fleas, how they deal with each other, how they deal with um, itches, right? And their, their design and the way that they can bounce around and move around. And it, it is one of the most amazing creations I've ever seen. Also, their intellect, right? They're very, very smart. They're, they're extremely smart animals. They know how to get in and out of things. They are, they are um, they're amazing creatures. And then I guess the most amazing thing that I see about the pit bulls is the kind of love that they have is every single one of them, I would say, are probably very close to a human. In fact, some of our pit bulls are probably more lovable and more affectionate than a lot of humans that you will engage with. And these things, um, we love our pit bulls with every last breath. And um, that is why we will we, we literally get in the middle of a, a pit bull fight. And if you've never experienced a fight at all, uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous, right? A, a pit bull, a dog fight of any kind is dangerous. But then when you have a pack, the pack will trigger itself and one person or one dog, one person is, I guess is what we call them here. They're people, little people does, but one of them will, will start up. And then the other one somewhere out of nowhere, another one comes and starts a fight. You could even have three on one and your only objective is to save the one and stop the fighting. So we have all literally dove in, in the middle of a dog fight and pry open mouths and sit there and fight off the other dogs so one dog doesn't get ravaged. Because you only, ha you only have seconds. You only have you know, literally seconds before something horrible happens. And so it is a crazy life that we lead. It's, it's, you know, we haven't really explained it like this, maybe a little bit. But I, am, I feel very, very blessed by, I guess I'm blessed and it feels awesome, almost like a little curse as well. Um, it is, it's like babysitting day in and day out. Like literally from the time that we open the doors and all the dogs come out, they all howl and scream and they go crazy and then they calm down and then it is literally babysitting all day long. You can't take your eyes off the pits um, or you could have some issues. And I just, I suppose you could take your eyes off them, but I, it, the issues are what, you know, triggers some sort of pack PTSD. So anyway, that is my, what I'm, I feel blessed about that Yah has, has, has made, has created. Uh, Cade, what do you got? Uh, I feel very blessed about the people, the people here on the channel, uh, everyone that is looking for the Torah, everyone that is willing to open their mind to Yah, just feels like a very blessed thing to have people that are actually searching for Yah and people that you can actually talk to the Torah about with open minds and it's a very it's a very good feeling to have people around that were willing to follow Yah and actually willing to open their hearts to His Word. Yeah, and I'll I'll follow that up. That's that's very good. Um, I'll follow that up because we have another channel and um, that we had forever, and they're they're anti Yah for the most part. Nobody there is seeking Yah. Nobody nobody cares about the commandments. Um, I'm just some Judaizer, legalistic stuff. And I mean, you get you get literal devils and demons, and so. When there is a channel where people are actually seeking the, the heart, mind, and soul of Yahuwah, it is very refreshing. You know, we've, we've you know, Sylvia Ewerts, we, we love her. She's a, she's a family member to us. Let's name some of the people that we love on this. Sylvia, um, we have Adiel and her mom, and we have Fearmonger, Fearmonger and Mason, Holgar. and Holgar, and Natasha. 
Um, I, I don't know if Missy ever listens to our stuff anymore, but we 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 love Missy and who is who's out there? Um, the Grand. We 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 love the Grand. Who else? Uh, you guys Hannibal Gray. Hannibal Gray. Um, and I guess her dad Two Moons. But those uh, she she has a little tribe over in Hawaii. And so there's a lot of people out there. And if we didn't mention you, it's simply because we're just we're doing this on the fly. And so I, I threw these guys under the bus. But um, we love all of you guys. And, yeah, we, we truly appreciate it. Jade. Um, I'm thankful for uh, today is the Shabbat. We have a day of rest. After a long week, we get to go into a rest. And we don't have to work today. We don't have to do a lot. We can rest and be with the Creator. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyone have anything to follow up on the Shabbat? Um, yeah, after a uh, long week, you just kind of need a refresher where there's no, where you don't need, where you don't have to worry about anything. But basically the word of Yah and getting rest, right? Refreshing yourself after weeks of hard work, your body's going to need that rest. If you don't rest, you're going to go into the week completely uh, feeling very drained, sore. Yeah, sore and drained. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it is It is a really, you know, normally don't you do Yahoo in the Torah, this, this like this, but because of the little oath that Eli and I, well, you know, we, we kind of made to Yah when, when our cows were gone, which he completely delivered us. And, you know, he delivered us. I mean, we, these kids are running through dangerous jungles and dangerous stuff. And, you know, the snakes are all over the place. They're, they're just, it is very, just a very dangerous place. And he delivered all our cows back. And, you know, Hasatan only was able to get our, our baby calf. And um, that I see as a, as a blessing because all, all cows were gone, right? And, and we had nothing. We cried to Yah. And so as we make it to a Sabbath, it is a very peaceful day compared to the rest of the rigmarole that we roll. Eli. Uh, I feel blessed about the rain. We have our crops grow, we have our grass go, grow that our cows can eat, and sometimes just refreshing. Yeah, it is, it is really refreshing because we have, where we're at, we have two, two seasons. We have wet and dry. And during dry season, we don't, we kind of run out of water. And so during wet season, you can just plant and there's, and is everything's out, you know, it just kind of goes because you don't have to worry about the water or anything of the sort. Nicole, do you have anything over there? Are you coming up? I threw her under the bus. She's. No, you're gonna throw me I am throwing you under the bus. She's a little bit away. Give me, give me something. Come up, come up over here, and and hack it up, will you? I guess I'm blessed for our family that we're able that y'all created our our family that we have here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, family is extremely important, and um, it is a it is a blessing. I mean, we we struggle. In fact, we are we probably struggle more than a, a tremendous amount of families out there, and I, I don't I don't even know how to explain it. But the more Torah that we teach, the more we are sifted by Hasatan. And yesterday, when our calf um, died, you know, we have we had some tears. But I'm like, you know what? Um, look, he's another cow into Yaw's Yaw's lands. You know, accept our cow. We are super sorry, and we are the, we are the family again. Uh, we've said it. We, we've never eaten one of our cows ever. <laughs> We've never, ever, we've had cows for how many years? Six, seven, six. six, seven years. And we've never eaten one of them. The only one that, that, that's been eaten is by our dogs. And he fell sick and we, we ended up having to take his life. And um, so we really, the cows and the dogs, I mean, everything, all the animals are kind of family to us. We, we love animals. We love anything with fur. Uh, it's probably something that may get us killed or something because we will try to pet something, anything with fur. It's like, oh, that's cool. And it might don't come pet up. the caterpillars. Yeah, don't <laughs> pet the furry caterpillars of South America. They, they will actually hurt you real bad. One thing of fur we don't like. <laughs> yeah, one thing of fur we don't like are the, the caterpillars with spikes that come out. Okay, well, that is the beginning of this. And I want to go over um, some of the commands because we actually in Exodus 21 and 22, Eli and I did that without the rest of these, uh, rest of the spokes in the, in the wheel. And, um, this is what we came up with yesterday from, um, because Exodus, let me, let me take us over real quick right here. So Exodus 21 and 22, is it 21? Yeah. 20, yeah. 21 and 22 had to, 21 was completely judgments. It was basically if you were living in the land of Yisrael, right? Because we don't have Hebrew servants. We, um, you know, we're not going to, yeah. I, I don't think I'm going to give my daughter to somebody and make them, make her a Hebrew servant. And if I had a daughter, I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, but 22 was a lot of the same, except towards the bottom. We ended up with some commands. And so this is where I want to go. So 22. 28 was do not covet anything of your neighbors. And that came from 2017. So 29, do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. 30, do not go up 
to the altar by the steps. And again, these are ones that, that you know, you're probably not going to make an altar. And if you do make an altar, um, this is how to do it, right? Don't, don't add metal to it. Don't hit it with metal. Um, and, you know, if you do make an altar, um, don't go up by the steps. And so those would not kind of be for us, but assuming that if you do, just so you know it. Now, 31 um, came from Exodus 22, 22. Do not oppress the fatherless or the widow, um, which is very important. And it, that's something that can apply to everybody, right? It is not something that is just for the land of Yisrael because there's fatherless and there's widows all around us. And so Exodus 22, 22 was, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. And then 32 is, do not eat what is torn of any beast. And ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. All right. 40 paws up. Yeah. All right. So that is important, right? Why is it important, anyone, who that we don't eat the torn beast from the ground? I mean, one, if you eat a torn beast, you don't know how long it's been there. It's There's infection, there's diseases, especially if it's not a clean animal. There's a lot of uh, bacteria that can go into those open wound that is torn. Unless you kill it yourself right there, and you know what it killed it, which was you. Then you you don't know what you're putting in your mouth. And plus, how it bleeds out is is different. Like if you if we do cows, I don't want to go too much into it, but you got to like bleed them out a certain way. Um, and you know it's it's if it's all torn up and it dies, you know that's that's the thing. Also, if it dies in a way of fear and terror, like it's it could the meat could be funky, right? I just there's something about it, and it's, it's a command, so we just shouldn't do it. All right, so let's get into that. This is Exodus 23. Everyone ready? Yep. It's good to be back, folks. Yeah. Yep. You, you would rather be out chasing here. cows in the jungle? No, that's at just... Night and in the rain? Oh, like, yeah, and plus it was raining, it was folks. It was like hours. It was just like hours of like almost like it felt yeah. like despair. It was, uh, like, it was, it was just... daily frustration. Yeah, frustration. They Excuse me. They came back and it was they were almost looked dead. I mean, these guys, they came back in and it, was, it had been raining for... A good five hours, and they were all in the rain. Um, we have two-way radios that we put into a bag, but other than that, we and then they carry it in the rain. But it this is this is um, this is not a life for the weak of heart. This is a this is I mean you you go out here and you commit to a way of living, and um, you know it's it's not it's not for weak folks. So anyway, let's continue on. Exodus twenty-three. Let me know if you guys hear any commands. You shall not raise a false report. Okay. Okay. Put not okay. your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Okay. All right. There's, there's, Very first there's command two. right out of the gate. One. Right. Yeah. Two, you shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall you speak in a cause to decline after many to pervert judgment. Okay. okay there's, that one. There's, there's two commands right there. Eli, you're going to have to add these in, please. I mean, because this is literally a command, right? So we should not raise a false report. So this is not just in the land of Israel. You should not go and say evil things. Three, neither shall you your you countenance a poor man in his cause. What does that mean, Jade? Uh, ours says, uh, and do not favor a poor man in his strife. So uh, don't sit there and try to like give pity to a poor man that is like striving with something. Right? You have to let him work out his own problems, or you're going to get yourself into the same problems he's in. Yes. Like, not to say I like, don't try and like put him on the right road, but don't sit there and like continually give and give and give. You have to like basically let him go. It's like the saying: you teach a man to fish and you feed him forever, but if you just give him the fish, you just feed him for a day. Yeah, and I there's uh, you know an old wise doctor I used to know used to tell me this, and he's like, he's like you can't save everybody. You you can give them a try, but sometimes the needy become helpless, and you become the only thing, and they'll drag you down, and so. Um, that is not to say that we shouldn't help them. I mean, you got you got to always help those in need. But again, like you said, sometimes we need to teach them how to fish versus just giving them fish all the time. All right, four. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. Okay, so there's another one, right? I mean, this would count for us today. So there's like three or four commands here already. Yeah, someone you don't like, someone that has done you harm and you see his cow out and you know it's his cow, he says that, you need to return it. That is the right thing to do, even if you hate that person. The way God tells you to do, because you're loving your neighbor with all your heart, right? Even though he he's done you wrong, you have to bring back his stuff. And it's not the cows' fault. It's out. And if you leave cows out around here, um, the people walk around with machetes, and so you can completely lose a cow extremely fast. Like they will they will strip a cow to nothing. 
I've seen a cow disappear in moments. Yeah, people here, there's a lot of stories of people just load them up and we're all, we're driving away. And you know, it's something that most people probably don't know, but South America, how South America is, and I think it was for everywhere from Mexico on down, is you don't have regular windows in your house. We do, because you can't really get here. But everybody else has bars across every window. So it looks like from, from Mexico down, and, and I don't know if that's all in Mexico, but I do know in some of the places in Mexico, Guatemala for sure, um, Honduras, you when you build a house, you put bars over the outside windows, and that just helps detour people because I guess they see an open window and they just break it or walk in it or something. And, and we've been we've been cleaned out when we were building our house. We completely lost everything we had. Um, they came in and they robbed us completely blind. So these these level these lands are are for the strong. Got to be strong down here. Okay, so we have what four commands already? Mm -hmm. All right, five. If you see the donkey of him that hates you lying under his burden and would forbear to help him, you shall surely help with him. Okay, so what does that mean? So I, mean, I think that would go you see, under like, his, I think his donkey is like if it's like fallen down, right? Like lying under his burden. I think a burden was referring to something it's carrying, but it's too heavy for the donkey. I think is what that would refer to. So like, you grab something. We looked it up last. I think it was like to help the donkey up or like take part of the burden off of him and carry it yourself. I think is what it was referring to. So if you see the donkey of him that hates you lying under his burden. And would forbear to help him, you shall surely help him. So if, if it's lying, if it's lying under his burden, I would say that it's he like, can't get up. It's falling down, right? It's too heavy. It's, the guy it's is like, messed up. Yeah, and the guy's like whipping the, the guy's donkey. Like, get up, the donkey. The guy's packed it too full. It's like you got to go help the donkey. So this version says, if you see the donkey of one who hates you lying, helpless under his own load, you shall refrain from leaving the man to cope with it alone. You shall help him to release the animal. Yeah, so yeah. that that I mean that's like that's a good to I mean you shouldn't leave the animals like you don't I, leave the animals with heavy things. Can't let the animals animal suffer. Does, the animal doesn't hit you. Nah, the animal the animal wouldn't be packing that stuff around if you did. Might pack this, man. Yeah. Okay. So that there's that. We have a lot of verses we're going to have to add here, or a lot of commands. Six. You shall not pervert the judgment of your poor in his cause. Anyone has a different one? Okay, and that that makes a lot of sense. Basically, just because if a dude is poor and he goes out and commits a crime. Because he is poor, it doesn't mean he he shouldn't get. It should be yeah, the same. It says, here it says, "Do not turn aside the right ruling of your poor and his stripes." So it's like even if he's poor, he's still got to be. Uh, he's still got to fall the under the Torah, right? Yeah. It doesn't for the rich and poor. Everyone's got to fall under this. You can't just say, "Oh, you're poor. It's okay. You can do what you want." Yeah, it's okay. He's just stole, you know, that or like you know, stole, did something evil or something. Everyone, there's one Torah for everyone. Yeah, there's one Torah exactly. And everyone has to fall under that. Absolutely. I'm so glad I have the wheels to my my spokes to my wheel back. I, I missed you guys. Just so you know. Okay, seven. Keep far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay you not. For I will not justify the wicked. So stay away from matters of rumors, basically. Stay away from rumors. Yeah, and the innocent and righteous slay you not. Like, uh, it says... Uh, so if you jump into something that is not true or some garbage, um, you're, you, it looks like you're going you to like, be slayed by those who are in the right. And uh, you know many times, right, when people sit there and create rumors, and if you, like, get into it, then someone's life gets ruined, right? Someone loses their job because of that rumor. You've killed the innocent, right? He may not get food the next day. He That's what it means to kill the innocent, right? If you get into a false matter and you join that bandwagon of hating that person, even though you know nothing, just because you hear it doesn't mean it's always true. You have to use right ruling to decipher what it is. You have to really put diligent work into the matter. Yeah, if you're going to get involved in that, I mean, you can completely be a homewrecker. You can completely have a woman and a man ruin a marriage because of slander and you know, the the hairstylist and you know where they sit there and talk and they they gossip and their little things. So, got to be careful about any of that. Don't take the wrong side because it says, "I will justify. I will not justify the wicked." Okay, and you shall take and you shall take no gift. For the gift blinds the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. All right, so I'm going to reread that. It says, do not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the seeing one and twists the words of the righteous. What does that mean right there? That means if you take a bribe, you say... You, what, is it, what, is, what exactly? How can we define a bribe? A bribe is something... It's, it could be any sort of form of gift that turns your eyes away from the matter. If you are a judge, right, and this man is sentenced to... 30 days in prison for a stolen TV, right? And the guy that stole the TV passed him $1,000. He goes, oh, it's okay. You're all right. That's a bribe. That is, uh, that is, it turns away from the matter. He is not punished for his crime, but rather the judge also is part of that crime now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's extremely wise, that kid. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's it. And that's it, why y'all didn't want that, because if you have a bribe, the land will become completely wicked, right? If this man murdered another man and they paid the 
killer, the man of righteousness, right? The one with the priest that was supposed to judge the matter, right? He looks over and goes, you murdered this dude. What was the situation? He's got the entire the entire priest and the judges with him. And this guy pays them off and they let the murderer go free. God's going to destroy them for the wickedness they have all committed. What happens is if you have a very evil man with who continues to give you money, do you need to give that money back? I would, I would say, say don't accept that, right? Because that was something y'all said, don't accept the money of a... Uh, of a whore, don't accept the money of a like from the dogs, right? You said don't accept for the pay of a dog. Money right? of evil. The money, yeah, don't accept the money of evil because, like you said, it perverts judgment. Right, and that that would be the thing is is when when somebody sends you money, you're immediately grateful, right? And so you would you would allow evil or evil to to stand where you probably wouldn't if you weren't under the the ban of. Uh, um, the cash, get the cash. All right, where am nine. I? Nine. nine. Okay. And you shall not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Mitriam. So these are, there's like the entire thing. We have like nine commands here. And I can tell you guys uh, from coming down to like where we're at now, all the way through South America, it's definitely different, right? You're not in your homeland. And when uh, you have hard times, right, nobody's there for you because you don't speak the language. The people are, don't understand you. Sometimes they will try and take advantage of you because you're the person that is a foreigner and they'll see that you have, you're more fortunate than them, right? Some people that are not as fortunate will take, try and take advantage of you and you know that feeling. You will know that feeling and you'll, you'll see that person when you get into that land, right? That's what Yahoo is saying. He goes, you went through all this stuff. Don't do what was done to you. You need to help these people. You need to bring these people in and try and help them. Yeah, we absolutely got white taxed all the way down. Um, when you, just by simply being white, um, they play what they call gringo bingo. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to cross a border. It doesn't matter if you're trying to use a bathroom at the border. It doesn't try, it doesn't matter if you don't understand, especially if you don't speak the language, they're going to school you. And they will get you through, but they will school you for cash along the way. They know they see you one time and you're gone, so they, they completely shake you down and... Um, it has happened, you know, we've been down here, what, seven, eight, nine years? I don't know. Maybe. It's uh, almost seven or eight, I think. Yeah. We've been down here a long time, and we, until, when we first came down, we didn't speak a lick of Spanish. In fact, we <laughs> we didn't even know how to get ice. We were discussing that this morning. We're in Mexico, and we're, like, about to drop dead, and we're trying to describe ice to people, and they've never even seen it. We didn't know it was yellow. It's like you're, like, just <laughs> trying to tell them, you're looking for a, could the yellow color, and you're like... Ice. I need like, yellow, ice, yellow, yellow, and they're like, oh, okay. And they What's yellow? They give you a pile of ice, but that's we did not know, and so now the kids all f speak fluently, and um, you know that is that is a key to uh, undoing a lot of the gringo bingo. But still, it, it when we go out or if we go out, there are we always get schooled because we are white. But I have to put that into the hand of being in North America and growing up on a farm is they always to, if you had brown skin. They always made fun of you. You always got the, the crappy jobs. Um, it, it goes, I guess, with whatever custom it is. If you look different than the custom, they're going to jack you up. And so this is why it says in the Torah, right? You should not oppress a stranger. And if that was the case, if the world lived like that, they wouldn't play gringo bingo on the way down here. That's or right. Day to day here. That's what he's saying. He goes, you know the troubles. You know what it's like to sit there and get robbed all the way out of uh, Egypt, all the way here. Do not do that to the other people. Have mercy on these people. They're just trying to make the life like you're trying to make your life. And we were also discussing in Gua it was Guatemala. We ended up lost in the middle of a freaking rainforest, um, and we ended up paying like I think of fifty dollars twice to these guys with these machetes to float our cars across this giant ravine. On this little 25, uh, what they call a, a, I can't remember, it's a 25 horsepower Rudd engine. Little tiny engine was taking our cars and a bunch, of, I thought we were all dead for sure. One way or another, I thought we were going to either blow down this river and all be dead, um, or these guys were going to shank us and kill us all. And, it, you know, we drove off, as you drive off of this, you drive into a bank of, of dirt coming off of this thing. And that was the only way for where we were at to get out of where we were at. And, um, yeah, it's easy to get lost. Don't oppress a stranger because we understand exactly what went on. Okay. In six years you shall sow your land and shall gather in the fruits thereof. Another command. What is this about? This is the Jubilee. And I can teach you on the next verse. Okay. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie still, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner you shall deal with your vineyard and with your olive yard. Okay, now does this apply to us today or does this apply to Yisrael? 
only. If you look at it today and you see like how Yisrael, Yisrael didn't have everything fenced off. Now everyone is, wants their own security, right? Everyone has their own land fenced off. They have everything. You can't get into someone else's land to get their food. Back in Yisrael, the fields were all open. So that guess that goes to the question: Is this for today or is this for Yisrael only? I would say there's a possibility we could not we couldn't keep it right because we don't exactly know the timeline in the every seven years when it should be. Yeah, so I that mean, that's a point. That is a very point. This is my, here's my point: is we should absolutely keep this if we could figure out what the what the calendar was, right? Because right. there's something about keeping your land, right? And this is when you don't sow food on your land, it brings nutrients back into it. And so you are able to give the land a rest. So our creator created this so that the land actually took the rest in the seventh year. So, um, but here, yeah, people are, everything's fenced off. And, um, you know, if you see somebody jumping in your fence these days, uh, it means the war, they're, right? Yeah, they're, they're, to, they're, they're coming to harm. Yeah, they're coming to do you harm, but yeah, it should be like this. This is the way it should I be. I think another way uh, you can do it, is since we don't know the time, right? If you grow up your fields, whenever you grow up your fields, right? If anybody out there has a field that's growing, whatever they're growing, uh, don't cut it all down. But when you will finish, cut down what's left of it and go give it to the poor around you. Go find the poor and give it to them and feed them with the stuff you've grown up. Yeah, so in the days, back in the days, right, they didn't have the machinery, they didn't have the stuff. And we actually get, I mean, we don't have machinery, we don't have any of that stuff, right? So we cut grass, we cut it with a machete, we cut it with a scythe. Um, and it's it, back in the days, it would have been the same thing, right? And so you would have, the machines, you just go and you put your, your combine down, you put your swather down or whatever it is, and you just go around the entire field. And it goes right, it kills, it gets everything, right? It cuts everything down. Um, but in the land, yeah, we would, we would leave... We would sigh everything. We'd leave the corners of it. Why would it leave the corners, not the middle of it? Uh, I would assume the... Because there's probably roads right next to the corners, and, and instead of people walking through the middle yeah. of your field, just easier go, it's easy access. To. Easy access. You know you know that if they're at the corners of your field, they're hungry, getting that food, um, at which point you should run out some oil to them or some, something else. You know, you see the, the poor out there. So. Another example I want to bring up is that you know that Yeshua and his disciples were poor, right? Because they ended up taking the grain and started eating it. Remember when they were grinding up on the Shabbat day? They wouldn't do that if they weren't poor, right? That was allowed for them. They weren't the Pharisees weren't angry because they took the corn. They were angry because they were grinding it up on the Shabbat because they were hungry on the Shabbat. Yeah. So they were obviously poor people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these guys these guys were not they're not rich by any means. Okay, um, where are we at? Twelve. Twelve. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Right. Still, I believe this goes under our other one of yes. keep keep the honor of the Shabbat day up. Yeah, should yes, that. yeah, our sub command. Yeah, but like like you said, be it'll be refreshed. That you guys should all be refreshed. That is what the Shabbat is for. Yep. for people to be refreshed. Yep. Okay. Thirteen. And in all things that I have said unto you, be guarded, and make no mention of the name of other Elohim. Neither let it be heard out of your mouth. All right, that definitely goes under the other. Don't worship other other uh, idols or something like that. I think that fits under that. Yeah, and what is it? I mean, other Elohim. I mean, we, we don't want to curse ourselves by mentioning other Elohim, but there's a lot of other Elohim. But yeah, a I lot. mean, our days and months in English are all built around the false mighty ones. Yep. Um, you have literally just the name God himself is just pagan, right? It's, it comes from pagan origin. It's a That's why his name is Yahuwah and doesn't ref, not be God because that could also be under a pagan origin. Yeah, absolutely. And if you call him Lord, that could also be Baal, right? That could, yep. There's a lot of pagan titles built into this, a lot of deception built into his name itself. <laughs> Father, forgive us. We just said a mighty one's name after we just read this. So, <laughs> uh, Just next time. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to explain. It's hard to explain this stuff if we don't say it, but that's what you would not say, right? You're not going to start having a... Uh, a swear word and say, you know, the, the bad mighty one's name or something, you know, that you just don't say it. Okay. Um, 14. Three times a year you shall keep a feast unto me in the year. Now, does this apply to us today? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, where does this go? Is this a new command? This is a new command, this, right? I don't think we've had it. Yeah, we haven't had any commands where he talks about the feast. I mean, yet. We, we talk about, pa- about Passover pass pass and unleavened, unleavened bread. bread, but we have not heard of the, any other feast. We should maybe put this as command is keep the feasts, maybe. Then have yeah, it well, in. you shall keep the feast unto me. And then the next one is you shall guard the feast of matzah. What is matzah? Matzah is unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. You shall eat matzah seven days as I commanded you in the time appointed in the month of Aviv, for in it you came out of Mitzrayim, and none shall appear before me empty. Okay, so that's the first feast, right? Mm-hmm. So the 14 tells us three feasts. 16, 15 tells us one feast. The other one, and the feast of Katsar, what does it say? The feast, uh, the festival of the harvest? Yeah, the harvest. The cause, so cause the first fruits of your labors. Right, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of Akath. What does it say? 
Feast of... Festival and Gathering? Yeah, In Gathering. gathering. Right. <laughs> which is the end of the year which you have when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. That's Sukkot. Sukkot. So there's, there's three. The three times in the year all your males shall appear before Adonai Yahuwah. Okay. So it says all of your males. So... So those I, are the. F- I think you have appear before him like in yeah, like, like priest before the temple. Like you're supposed to bring him a sacrifice every time, like a special honorary sacrifice, like they had in the first fruits when they waved the sheep offering that was supposed to be for them. But these feasts still apply because we're supposed to still celebrate these feasts. I was the only way show up. And in these ones the land. you notice are actually called festivals, which are the feasts when you are supposed to cook, and it's almost like a almost like a giant Thanksgiving day. A hag. Uh, yeah, a hag. Feast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, eighteen. Uh, is no kamats shall be upon shall be upon my offering of blood, and no fat of my feast shall remain till morning. All right, mine says, "Do not offer the blood of my slaughtering with leavened bread, and the fat of the, my festival shall not remain until morning." Okay, and so that's for the priests, I believe, for the sacrifices they are doing. No kamats shall be up on my offering of blood. Right, so we're not we're not going to be offering of blood. Right, we're not going to be slaughtering either. Right, but we do need to keep these feasts. Right, we can put that under commands. Right, okay. That, that goes under commands. Yeah. I put that there. So we're going to have a bunch of these. Are you keeping up, Eli? Yep. Are you sure? Yeah, I was actually ahead until I got to this one, so I wasn't sure if it goes on the list or not. All right, this is why the the spokes of the wheel are great. All right, Um, 19? Yes. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of Yahuwah Eloheka. You shall not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Okay, okay, what is this? Cook a young goat in its mother's milk. That's weird because you have the first fruits in that same verse. There must be something there about that verse being all together. Yeah, so what Why? What, what does this mean we don't see the uh, kid in his mother's milk? Why Why would we have this command? You were supposed to sacrifice the firstborn of the goats back on these festivals, right? The firstborn, the first, the first uh, of every animal was supposed to be under Yahuwah. And so I assume that the way one of the sacrifices went ended up with milk or something, or you cooked it with milk in order to give it away. I don't think you were supposed to cook it with the milk. There was just something wrong with cooking it in the same mother's milk. Yeah, it's kind of jacked it's up. Like, that yeah, you it's kill like kind of like a um, twisted thing to like cook, cook, cook it in his mother's milk. These are yeah, these are interesting judgments or interesting commandments because it, Yah has his ways for everything, and um, we don't know why you wouldn't use the mother's milk, but it's obviously uh, some sort of a. a it makes Yah angry, so we don't do that. Okay, so 20. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Okay, so that'd be good. We'll take that. And I know there's messengers all around us, definitely. There's no way in the world we would survive this pit bulls without messengers trying to draw the short stick, trying to save us. Okay, 21. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Okay, so if you see an angel, um, don't make him angry, right? Yeah, he's like, so is this going to come in? Is, um, okay, well, here you go. Behold, I sent an angel before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Maybe when we... Uh, Do we have angels today? I believe yeah, so. Absolutely, absolutely, we have angels today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I, maybe on our second exodus, right, when we all return to Yerushalayim, there's probably going to be messengers guiding us. So we shouldn't offer him a ham sandwich. Probably no. not. He probably that, that's might, pro- might just. Yeah, is like, that provoking yeah. the angel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's probably like, like yeah, these guys aren't. No worth lobster, it. Mr. Angel. And he'd probably slap right behind and be like, hey, that's sin there, man. Stop uh, that. Dude, he'd turn around with one of his fiery swords dude, and slice his in like, half. He's like, he like he'd give a call up. To, yeah, sorry, these guys aren't worthy. Dude, Cora would reach out from the ground and grab you and throw you in the ground. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Give, give us a call to Yacht. Uh, who's the next people? Yeah, next. These people didn't make it. Fail. Are you sure about this? Sorry. <laughs> these ones These ones have bad jokes. We should take them now. <laughs> okay, 22. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. Eli, did not answer that. Is that a command? We didn't answer this. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, I... Do not think so. That is a command. Uh, maybe on our second exodus. Say second exodus. So I mean, if you happen to see an angel, if his angel says here, don't go on, provoke go. him. Well, don't provoke him, right? I mean, so I mean, this is this is something we should be aware of, right? It's almost like a. It's like one of the king's royal guards, right? You have to honor this dude. I mean, this dude's of a high place of power. Yeah, these things are like deadly. I mean, they'll mess you up. <laughs> Two of them went into Solomon and Moore so, and like messed that whole place up. So is this a command or not? All right, so yes. It's not something that from back of the day. 
So if you see an angel and he's like bringing you to the place which Yahuwah has repaired. How do you know he's an angel and not the demon? Uh, for his name will be in it. Yeah, oh, his name, yeah. yeah come in the name of Yahuwah, right? So if we start blessing Yah and start singing praises to Yah, the demon's going to like run away if it's a demon. Yeah, yeah like, like in uh, the book of Adam and Eve when Jerry started praying the demons couldn't be near him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's, let's add that as a command. Um, if you guys end up seeing an angel, don't offer him a ham sandwich. Okay. Um... Let's see, 23? Mm -hmm. Yes. For my angel shall go before you. And no, 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 22. 22. But we, but we went back over it. We didn't discuss it. Okay, so, but if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. Do we have, do we have forces of good that fight for us? I believe yeah. so. I don't, I don't think we would have survived I think with we'd all, all be of it. Yeah, we'd all be dead. We've, you know, there's, there's, Boss Clan has a lot more stories. Um, we actually went. After a this this entire Christian group went and they had a kid that was being molested by their group and they like a hundred of them knew about it. Boss Clan went after them and we ended up with lawsuits. We ended up uh, our house raided. We ended up with all sorts of stuff. So and at that time during the house raid, uh, Yod closed eyes and stopped uh, mad. I mean, they, these people had to come through our house with the dogs. And so y'all completely dealt with these people and, um, definitely. Yeah. And so we, without a shadow of a doubt, we've been, we've been taken care of by them as crazy as our life is. We, we definitely have. So yeah, um, I'll be an enemy to your enemy and adversary to your adversaries. I believe that. 23, for my angels shall go before you and bring you in unto the Emerium and to the Kittium and to the Pezium and to the Kinanium and to the and the Kivium and the Yevisium and I will cut them off. Okay, no commandments there. And shall not bow down to your their Elohim. You, you shall not bow down to their Elohim, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Okay, that's a whole command right there, right? It's a break down the mighty you, get, you do not we do not bow to anyone but Yah, right? You right. do not get on your knees, you do not you do not serve the other one. Uh, this, this is like break the pillars. This is uh yeah, and break down their images. So, um and I mean, he's kind of talking about the, the people before, right? All right. But, but if still, you still we shouldn't still bow to it. Absolutely. Don't uh don't uh, do that. Okay, 25. And ye shall serve Yahuwah Elohekim, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Okay, so do we, I mean, it says, we shall serve Yahuwah Elohekim. Right. So that's a command. That's a command. Let's take it. Well, you got that, Eli? Yep. We're going to have to go over these afterwards, make sure you have these. Uh, you and your mother, you guys are legal beagles, you'll make it. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in your land, the number of your days I will fulfill. All right, so none shall miscarry or be barren in your land. I shall fill the number of your days. Okay. Right. So basically that continues on from the last verse. He will bless you. All your people will have children. You guys will multiply greatly. Right. Okay, and so is that, I mean, what is there any commands or anything? No like? commands, just more of a promise of a blessing. All right. I will send my fear before you and will destroy all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make your, all your enemies turn their backs unto you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the kivi, the kinium, and the kitty from before you. So uh, a little bit of context on that is these people, he's talking about the, the Canaanites and the Kiwites, all these people were like giant people. These were not just normal human beings. So these had to be some huge hornets to Nephilim. scare these people out of here. These things had to be like ginormous bugs to scare these people out of the land. Um, I, not necessarily. I don't think, I mean, it would, I mean, all you need is a swarm. A lot of people forgot about a cockroach. So I don't think we, so. We'll be sitting here in South America and all of a sudden you'll hear like mass amounts of zzz and you'll look up and right above you where there's thousands of like bees or hornets or wasps just going somewhere. I don't passing know. Passing by. Huh? They're passing by. Yeah, they're, pa they're passing by and it's like you, you think to yourself, wow, am I going to live after this? You know, it's like if these things for whatever reason decide to come down and start biting me. It would be over. You run, would not run survive real that. Fast. Yeah, you, it doesn't matter the size of them. It matters that there are the amount of them. So I don't need. They need to be giant. But I'm sure y'all didn't mess around. I'm sure. I'm sure whatever he sends is not going to be happy. Okay, I will drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against you. So he's like, I got to make this quick. I can't let you this go. You guys have to. We'll do this in a year because if it takes too long, 
all these animals, all the ox and all the sheep, but there are going to be so many you guys won't be able to handle this. Yeah, or the wild beasts. I mean, if these things multiply, um, or you know, if you don't, if you don't contain your animals, they'll, they'll contain you. Okay, by little and little, I will drive them out from before you until you be increased and inherit the land. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Peleshitim, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall cut no covenant with them, nor with their Elohim. Now, this is talking about them and their land, but could this apply to us today, right? You shall cut no covenant with them, nor their Elohim. Because we are all... We are all of the tribes of Yisrael. We are all part of it. We are all in captivity. When you guys awaken and you figure out that, oh, wow, our Elohim has been calling to us and this is the, the law, statutes, and commands of, of the Elohim most high that we follow. Um, when it, what does it mean you have, shall cut no covenant with them nor with their Elohim? What happens if you pledge your allegiance to a flag and you put your hand over your heart and you look, you look at a, a, a symbol of, of Mystery Babylon and you know pledge your allegiance to it? I mean, that's a covenant, right? You're cutting a covenant. I pledge allegiance to the flag. And that's, you know, for anybody who's not from North America, I have no idea what your schools are, but ever I grew up and that's what we do in the morning. Every way you go to school, morning ritual. you stand up, you put your right hand over your heart and you look at the flag, you put your other hand behind your back. Some kids do, some kids don't. And you sit there and you pledge allegiance, you know, and this was, this was break. We were break. you know, we were cutting a covenant with them, right? We're pledging an allegiance to them. And everybody says it in like, like a seance style. It is a seance style. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think this should be a command. I, wherever you are at, we should not be pledging an allegiance or cutting a covenant um, you know, and, and when you cut a covenant with them, I mean, they're, they're going to be doing evil around you, right? You don't want to be a partakers of this at all. All right. So Eli, make sure that gets in there. Yep. Come here. 33. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their Elohim, it will surely be a snare unto you. So I think this one is for the land of Israel, because right now everyone around in the world is, uh, in the world of sin. Everyone is in the world of, uh. There are other, everyone has their almighty ones, and there's nothing we can do about it at this point unless we get to the land of Israel, where we can actually yeah. kick them all out. We are slaves. We are. We have all woken up in in the slavery, exactly as the Bible says. I will be. I will disperse you to the four corners of it. And in the end days, people are going to hear about this, and they're going to seek Yah. And and this is this is why it's so exciting that we are we are able to do this stuff because it's it's like you know at the at the end times it, it says in fact Hebrews 8 talks about the, the new covenant and that he's not going to have to tell our neighbors we're not going to have to tell them about Yah because everybody knows about him you know whether or not they choose to serve him they will all know his name and and you know we're we're slowly but surely getting to that stage there's a lot of people in our lives all around in various uh, places that are learning this and they're they're you know there's a lot of excited people with this and it's exciting yeah, it's like uh, when, when we were doing the Youth for Yah the other day, which uh, we had someone comment in and say, uh, we could read Amos 8, 11, and it was talking how in the end days, Yahuwah will give everyone a hunger for the knowledge of the Torah, how that everyone will have a hunger and uh, a strive to learn his will and learn his word. Yeah, because the only other way other than his way is darkness. It, it, it's sickness. The world is completely filthy. It is just disgusting. The men have become women. The women have become men. Uh, their pedophilia is becoming legalized across the world. It's just a sick, sick world we're in. And so you either are okay with this trash and garbage. And I, I honestly would not even under, if we started watching TV, we haven't watched TV, what, seven, eight years? It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, we have no idea what's on TV, but I imagine the stuff that because of the way that we're seeing the world and the, the men becoming women and women becoming men and the whole, the whole thing, that whole setup, I would imagine the TV shows have nothing but um, homosexuals and things of that nature in there. And that is an abomination, right? Men should wear what's pertain to men. Women should wear what is women's. Um, it, you know, we all have our place. We all have our duty. Our creator created us as we should. You know, men are obviously, I hate to say this, bigger than women, right? The women are now embracing and have been embracing, especially in, in North America. We had a, a woman's... Um, like, uh, I don't know, in the 80s, 90s, and whatever, where all the women wanted to become men. They all started serving in the military. They all wanted the same jobs as men. Um, and it is a, it, it's an abomination. It really is an abomination. You know, women, I'm not saying women should be in the kitchen, but I am saying that they should be in a less dangerous spot than where you have your men. Your men should take the beatings, whereas your women should be cared for, taken care of, um, loved, cherished, and, and not put in the same situation that a man who were built 
in every way, right? We're built way stronger than, than a, a female, and that will probably make a lot of females angry. Uh, and that's what Yah Yah, when he built uh, Adam, he says, you're going to run the land, you're going to do all this, you're going to create everything. And when he created Eve, he's like, you're going to help him. And she was never designed to be in the garden, be plowing the fields like Adam was. Adam was specifically designed to do that. Yeah, and, and I will take stabbing my finger with uh, thorns and picking rocks versus the curse of the woman. So um, <laughs> I will take the sweat of the fields. All right, guys, that is it. I, that is almost, we're nearly, we're nearing an hour. We're nearing 49 minutes right here, so. Um, it's a Shabbat. Thank you guys very much for being a part of this. Everybody out there, you guys are all part of our digital family. We really, truly appreciate the people on this channel and, and you know, all of you guys as you guys uh, correspond with us and talk with us and challenge us and, you know, just hang out with us. We, we do appreciate you guys and we love you guys. And so... That is it. Um, gentlemen, do you have anything else? I'm glad to be back, and uh, Shabbat Shalom. Read your Bibles. Yeah, have a restful day, and um, make sure you're resting. Yeah, make sure you're resting and, and enjoying Yah's day. All, All right. right. Shalom. Shalom.